Uh, my fourth rule if, uh, is the if-should rule. Uh, and my if-should rule, this is something that uh, I've, I've made up, and it's very simple, and it makes a lot of sense, and it goes hand-in-hand hand with using things like unambiguous trading tools. Uh, but it, it is simply this. If the market price does X, Y, Z, then the market price should do A, B, C. If the market price does not do what it is supposed to do, get out. Get out. Uh, and uh, by that, uh, actually, I'm going to I'm going to put on a um, uh, a chart here. I figure I might as well show you guys a, a chart. Uh, let me put it back on here. Here here is a, a chart of the euro versus U.S. dollar, and this uh, blue. Uh, blue line represents the 100-hour uh, uh, moving average. The green line is what I call is a 200-hour moving average. And these are the tools, uh, the moving averages that I use in my analysis. And what um, what, what we see here um, is that, uh, or what my, my trading rules are, is if, if the market breaks above the 100-bar moving average, that is a bullish bias, okay? Uh, so you should be looking to go long the market. And you can see here the market broke above the 100-bar moving average at this point right here. Now, the 200-bar moving average, uh, in, in my uh, mind, is the confirming moving average, uh, and uh, that confirms the move to the upside. So my if-should rule says if the market, uh, once again, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it to you uh, in, in, uh, in, 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 in a ver verbal way. If the market price does X, Y, Z, then the market price should do A, B, C. If the market does not do what it's supposed to do, get out. So in this case, if the market price breaks above the 100-hour uh, moving average, the market price should uh, move higher. If it, the market does not do what it's supposed to do, then get out. So in this case, the market price moved above the 100-bar moving average, went to the confirming moving average, and we should see the market move higher. And that's exactly what it did. When we come down to this uh, point right here, and the market tests the 100-hour moving average, someone who is trading this market might say, if the market price tests the 100-hour moving average, the market price should hold that 100 moving average, uh, and uh, the market price should go up. So the market is trending to the upside. It comes down to the 100-hour uh, moving average, and a trader might sit there and buy against this 100-hour moving average, expecting the market to go up. In this case, if it doesn't do what it should do, in, that, in, in this instance, what it does is it just rallies up a, a very minor amount, and it breaks below the 100-hour hour moving average. Guess what you should do? Get out. It's as simple as that. And so, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a simple rule that I apply, but you'd be surprised how many people will sit there and buy, have a reason to do a trade, do the trade, see it go in their favor a little bit, and then when it comes down below this moving average line, continue to stay in the trade. What was the reason to do the trade? Because it was against the 100-hour moving average. What is the reason? Why should you still be in the trade if the market is priced as trade down here? You shouldn't. You should get out of the trade and look for another opportunity because there will be another opportunity. That's the one thing I can guarantee uh, in trading is that there will always be another opportunity. So follow the if-should rule, rule. And if you follow the if-should rule, uh, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. The other thing is if you trade for a reason, if you trade at these key levels, uh, guess what? Your risk is going to be limited. And if your risk is limited, guess what your fear is going to do? Your fear is going to be limited as well. Uh, so we do have a question here uh, that I'll, I'll attend to. Your rule is that the 100 moving average is a trigger and the uh, 200 is a confirmation. What, what do you do when the price breaks the 200 moving average first and then the 100? Well, that's yeah, that that's a good question. <laughs> um, and um, uh, that uh, typically happens when the market is in a non-trending uh, period. Uh, that is the mark. The market is moving up and down, up and down, up and down. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, uh, 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 typical. Uh, let me see if I can find uh, you know a situation like that. So here the market breaks the hundred and it goes below the two hundred, and then it breaks above the uh, two hundred. Uh, so this is the case where the market breaks above the two hundred and goes through the one hundred at this point. This is a, a non-trending type period. Um, uh, and what what I w I look for and what my rules are is that it, that if the market breaks the 100 bar moving average, we should go through the 200 to confirm the move to the downside. Now this gets to another uh, situation of the um, uh, the if should rule. Now if the market breaks the 200 bar moving average, it should continue down. 
we should see a continuation of the trend to the downside. If it doesn't, that is, if it moves back above the 200 and moves above the 100, guess what? It's not. If it moves back above the 200, it's not doing what it should do. It's not continuing the trend to the downside. We should see the confirmation of the trend and a continuation of the move to the downside here. We don't. We see a, we see a, a, a reluctance for the market to uh, move move in that direction. I mean, it does. I mean, it does. It does come down here, uh, and it looks like the market's going to move lower. But when we get one, two, three bars, and we're back above that 200, that's where uh, you start getting out of the trend right here. And either you're looking for a reversal where the market's going to continue uh, in that direction and move above the 100 bar moving average, in which case, you know, it failed on this move going down. But in most cases, uh, the, the, I mean, mo most cases, what normally happens is the market cons is in a consolidation pe uh, period right here. Uh, and the market, um, uh, it, uh, you know, tries to, it tries to establish um, a, a, an identity as far as which way uh, it wants to go. I mean, granted, it does the same thing here. It goes below, it, go, it goes above the 200 bar moving average, and it should go higher, right? And it doesn't. It comes back down below. So this gives you a bias back to the downside. So I'm always focused on um, what it does last. I hope that answers your question in that that you go through the 100, we should see, uh, we, we go through the 200, we should see higher prices if we don't get out of that trade. Um, and it, if it goes to the 100 again, we should see uh, lower lower prices. Uh, and uh, in, the, in this case, um, uh, it, 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 uh, it comes back up to the 100 and then moves back up 100 and starts its, what, are, what is the normal trend to the upside. Does that answer your question? I hope it does and hope it, it clears things up. But you're always, you're always looking for the market to do what it should do. And if it doesn't, then you want to uh, get out of that trade and reevaluate. But in most cases, the not when, it, when it's bass backwards, uh, when, when you start to go through the 200 and then the 100, um, like we did here and like we did here, uh, the market is more in a consolidation uh, uh, period. Uh, it, it likely not to trend, uh, but this is a clear sign that the market is trending to the upside. So I hope that answered your question. So anyway, anyway, the, um, that is um, uh, that is my if should rule. So um, let, you know, let's look at the, the current market here. This is the euro versus US dollar, and what we've seen here is the market uh, broke through the 100 bar moving average. Now the 100 bar is still moving to the upside, and we come down to another support level, actually a 38.2% retracement. So, um, uh, which is another one of my tools. Uh, so, although the market went below the 100 bar moving average, giving a bearish bias here, uh, we did find that we did find buyers against 38.2% retracement. And that helped push the market back up to the upside here uh, toward the end of the day. But note, notice here that the 100 bar moving average started to take control again at this point right here. Uh, and the market started to use that level as a level of resistance. And even though the price did move uh, briefly above this, uh, this uh, tr the moving average here, uh, we're in a non-trending type pattern right here. And normally when the market non-trends, it looks to trend. Uh, but you can see how the market gave one last test of that 100 bar moving average, failed on that level. And in fact, if I zoom in closer here, what you see here is a big, huge tail here, which uh, for those people who follow candlesticks will know that that is a, you know, a failure of this move to the upside. And in the next bar, the market tries to go up and get above that line again and fails again. And that starts to move to the downside. Where do we go and, and find support? We go and find support against the 200-hour moving average on the chart here. Uh, goes down to a low of 127.91. The 200-hour is a, uh, a 87, and the market consolidates and is now in between um, uh, support and resistance um, uh, in this chart. So that's what I mean by the if should 